Good morning, everyone. Or whatever time you're watching this. <laughs> it's currently the morning for me. I put on some eye patches. Sometimes these are like really uncomfortable. And I don't know, I feel like they kind of like push on my eye, but then it's like I want it close enough to actually like do its job. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so I want to make some coffee and some body bloom. It's from um, Tropica by Sarah's Day. It's a pre-probiotic. I got approved from my doctor to have this while I'm pregnant. Um, and it just helps like inner glow, helps with your skin, your hair, your nails, um, your digestion, just all around some good stuff. I actually drank it for like a long, oh my gosh, my frizzes. I drank it for a long time, um, like before I checked with my doctor. <laughs> Because I just kind of assumed it was okay because she actually created it while she was pregnant and like drank it while she was pregnant um, And it was I don't know. So I was just like, oh, it's probably fine. And when I asked they're like, yeah, it's fine Like as long as it's not like kombucha kind of a probiotic Which I have had a couple times. So I just put a little like teaspoon or something stir it up It's a really pretty pink color and I put it in this anthropology glass that I got for our wedding, which was like, I don't know, how long have we been married? <laughs> Three and a half years ago. I would drink an iced coffee right now, but we're out. So I'm gonna have to make make a cup. Let Louie out. We have like a whole list of stuff that we wanna do before the baby comes, or at least I have like a massive list. So I'm gonna go grab my drink. And one of those things was to um, just pretty up. Oh my gosh, this is really out of focus. There we go. Pretty up the outdoor area. It rained one day, like on Sunday, but I think the rain's probably gonna stop. So we started to like fill the area with new bark, but there's still like pieces that don't have it and whatever, because I think I've said this, one of my favorite things is to just come out here in the morning, like when it's nice weather and just sit in the sun on our patio furniture. And I just think that sounds Oh, is he gonna poop? Oh. I just think that sounds really lovely for when the baby comes and I don't know if I want like a little <laughs> me time or something and just come out in the morning and like read my Bible or listen to music or just sip on my coffee. Don't know how much <laughs> um, time I'll have for that, but it's so hard. It's like, I, because obviously, because I've never had a baby before, it's like, I, I can't even like predict like what life is gonna be like because I've had I've had many friends that have been pregnant. Oh gosh, I feel like I haven't even like I don't even know what's on my face right now. I have so many friends that have had babies. My sister had a baby. Um Kyle's sister had a baby. It's just like and everyone's experiences were so different. Like so different. Some had really easy times, some had really hard times. I don't know, it's just I can't even I can't even predict it. So I wish I could. I wish I could say like, yeah, like this is kind of what my schedule is gonna look like and this is um, like the commitments I'm gonna make, but I can't. I've officially started my maternity leave, which is really exciting. Um, kind of weird at the same time. I told myself I wasn't gonna start it until like basically I go into labor. Because for those of you that don't know, I work at my church um, and I love my job. Like it's so much fun and it's not like, it's not taxing and it's, it's just like a really, great environment that I'm like, I honestly feel like I could just work up until um, I give birth, <laughs> basically go into labor. But then when I found out that I was gonna be induced, which I'm gonna update you guys on because I've had some questions about that, um, I was kind of thinking like, okay, well actually, <laughs> knowing I'm gonna have like a date that I'm gonna be induced, it kind of sounds nice to just have like the week before, just be like a prep and get ready and, um, like deep clean the house, stock the fridge, like do all the things that I want to do. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically just taking a good time before the baby comes to uh, just like get ready and even like mentally kind of prep as much as I can. If you can even do that. So an update on um, my whole induction thing. So <laughs> like I said in the last, okay, I hope this street noise isn't bad. But like I said in the last video, I don't have a lot of like followers, so I didn't really like think, oh, like me up saying this update like probably isn't that big of a deal <laughs> to a lot of people. Like not a lot of people are gonna be stirred up by it. <laughs> Forgetting that I actually have a lot of people in my life 
that watch my vlogs or like, I, so I always post like my thumbnail on my Instagram stories. I had so many people that literally never have even mentioned that I vlog, ever. Either come up to me or text me or something and ask me if I'm okay, which is so, so sweet. I'm like, oh wow, people are actually like paying attention to things that I post. I'm like, shoot, I actually think I like freak, pe freak some people out that like really know me. So here's an update or something I want to say first because a lot of you were commenting of like you can choose what you want to do the doctors like don't um, like you don't have to get induced you don't have to get an epidural uh, epidural um, like you can make your own decisions or whatever which I totally know I can and that was something that I said in the in the video it's like I know or actually I don't even know if I said this it's like I know that I can say no to all of it but I wanted to like fully understand what was happening before I just said like, I don't want to do this. Cause I also don't want to be like stupid <laughs> and like risk like my, like risk my well being, the baby's well being. Um, so like I want, I just wanted to fully understand the situation and I feel like I wasn't understanding it. I also think I'm not going to make coffee cause at this point I'm like, I'm already talking and I'll just sip on my body bloom. <laughs> this would be my coffee for the day. Cause no caffeine, that's okay. So yeah, I just wanted to understand the situation and I felt like I wasn't understanding it. And when I had called to get clarity, I talked to some random receptionist lady and she was like the least helpful person. I think she just didn't know like what I was talking about. So I honestly should have just said like, you know what, thank you for your time. Let me just wait and talk to my doctor next week. So anyways, I did, um, saw another midwife they're both great, um, but she just explained it a little bit differently, which I was like, oh, like, <laughs> that literally makes so much sense, okay, totally okay with the induction, totally okay with all of this. I wasn't really not okay with it, I was just like, I, I just don't get it. So let me break it down for you of what's going on. And I'm gonna try to say this quickly because I think I briefly said it in my last one, but for those of you that missed it, I'm gonna say it, and um, this will help explain it for all of you. And I also wanna say this for like anybody that might be pregnant or might like be going through the same exact thing, like their platelet count might be low too. I just wanna, one, update people that care, but two, you know, at least, I don't know, just try to be helpful to like somebody that might be going through this. So my platelet count is low. Um, a good count is about, it starts at 150. Um, mine is at the cusp of like a little bit above 100. We do not want it to go below 100. If it goes below 100, I cannot get an epidural. So if it went below 100, the only way I can get an epidural is if they put me on steroids for six days. It has not gone below 100, so I'm good, I'm in the clear, and I'm okay to have an epidural, as long as the number stays above 100. So what I wasn't fully understanding, which is honestly probably something that a lot of people know, but I didn't know this. I think mainly the only reason that the doctors care about the epidural is not for like my pain relief. It's because if I were to have an emergency C-section um, and my platelet count was too low, then uh, I'd have to be b b knocked out. Like they have to put me under general anesthesia and I'd miss the entire birth of my baby because I didn't know that the way they numb you in C-sections are by an epidural. Okay, that was like a big fact. Probably a lot of people know that. I just, I don't know, I just didn't think about that. I was like, oh, that is why it matters. Because they keep saying like, well, if they drop, we wanna be able to induce you. I'm like, but what happens if they drop? Like, well, I mean, I just can't get pain relief. Like, I just, I don't really understand this. So if they were to have dropped below 100 and I was put on steroids, they would need to induce me in that time on the steroids to guarantee that my platelets are up. Since they haven't dropped below 100 and I don't need to be put on steroids, the big question I had was why do I still need to be induced? The reason is if I get induced, they'll check my platelets and if for some reason they've dropped, um, I'm not in labor yet. So they can do something and give me something to up them um, just in case so that I can get an epidural. But if I just went into labor naturally um, and they check my platelets and they're low. Oh, Louie, don't pee on those. Thank you. So if I just went into labor naturally and my platelets were too low, um, I'm in active labor and there's nothing they can do about it. They can't do anything to up the count and at that point we're just praying I don't need a C-section. I can say like don't induce me and I'm just taking the risk of me not needing an, uh, a C-section. And if I did, I'd just be knocked out. So it's like I know I have the total like freedom to say I don't wanna be induced but it's like I, I'd rather 
be induced and not risk missing the birth of my baby if I had to have a C-section, you know? Anyways, I hope that explains it. I'm gonna go back inside. Like I said in the last video, it's like they have so much to do. They're so busy. They don't have like all the time in the world to explain every single detail <laughs> to all their patients. So I get it. My dearest Louie marked on our bed skirt this morning. Um, and he marked on our couch like two weeks ago and I think it's because he knows the baby's coming He'll only mark like around like when times like what like when something's going on Like if we have gone on vacation or when we come back and he's angry <laughs> or he knows we're leaving on vacation Ooh, this is falling off. Has that been like that the whole time? I am so sorry That's probably really irritating to look at so I think he knows and I'm just like praying that It'll be good when she comes that like he doesn't get too jealous or doesn't start marking every, oh gosh, we'll see. Um, on today's to-do, I have a, like a few appointments I need to get to today, um, but I have some little breaks in between. I really want to start a list, which I think I'm actually, I think I'm gonna start that right now, of basically all the things I one, want to just get done before the baby comes, like, random little things like shopping things, and then two, all the things I really wanna clean before the baby comes. Cause I wanna do like a big deep clean of the house, literally clean every crack and crevice of the house. I know it's like not necessary. It's like the fireplace being cleaned is not going to affect my daughter. <laughs> but whenever I've done those like massive deep cleans, oh, like it just warms my soul and I'm just so happy. <laughs> That's the great thing about being induced is like, I mean, if I don't go into labor before my induction date, is I can literally have the house spotless so that when we come home from the hospital, it's literally gonna be like, just an absolute heaven of a home. I'm gonna go get a pen and paper. There is just something about writing with a pen on paper that is a million times better than like putting it in your phone. I just think, it's wonderful. Okay, I want to finish the patio. I wanna like put like flowers around the house. We're going to freeze some soup. We do have a meal train going. So if there's any friends that wanna hop on the train, toot toot, I'll send you the link. But we have it signed up for every other day because we were advised that because sometimes people's meals are so large, you just have like so many leftovers that if you get a meal every single night, you're just like gonna have way too much food. But there probably are gonna be nights that either people don't sign up or we actually didn't have leftovers. So we're gonna make a big batch of soup and freeze a ton of it. And this is like my favorite soup and I can seriously eat it like every single day. Make and freeze soup. I really want us to buy new towels. This is not necessary, but it's like one less thing that I need to worry about after she comes, you know what I mean? That's why so many of these things, it's like this has nothing to do with the baby. It's just more like these are things I really wanna get done. But when the baby comes, I don't want like all these like to-dos on my mind and then like stress myself out. So, I'm just gonna write it all down. Okay, well I'm just gonna try to sit here and think of more things we need to do and then I'll talk to you in a bit. So I have to start getting ready for my day, but I've made my list. <laughs> so my plan oui, to not overwhelm myself was once I finish my list, which I'm probably honestly gonna keep finding things to add to it, um, to then write it in my planner of like how I'm gonna execute all of it. Because as important as it is to make a list of all your to-dos, it's also important to um, think about time management and your stress and your mental health because a lot of people will make something like this see something like this and literally get so overwhelmed that they like don't even get anything done and just stress themselves out because so many of these things are really quick like they don't take a lot of time this is why i took the week off of work <laughs> hello good morning it is two days after um and i am going to start a load of all the baby clothes i'm doing this because i've heard people say you should wash all of the baby clothes before you put them on her which probably is like a thing just like a general thing that you should do for any clothes but I 
I don't know. Like when I shop for clothes, I don't wash them before I wear them. Is that gross? I don't know. Do you guys do that? So most of her stuff is like pretty neutral. I want to do like one big load. But there's like whites in here and her crib sheets and stuff like that. So I'm wondering like wash it all at the same time. There's some stuff over there that's super bright that I am too scared to wash with like her crib sheet. I mean how do you do that? Like when you're washing baby clothes do you do like whites and darks and stuff? I don't know how that works. And do you dry them? I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that's like made out of cotton that's just gonna shrink. I don't know. Shoot! They grow out of their stuff so easily and then they get they get them like stained and gross anyways. So it's like I don't I don't really need to worry about them being like tinted. I think more it's more like the crib sheets that I'm like, oh I'd really like the crib sheet to be really white. I just woke up not that long ago and I'm really, really wanting coffee and toast. My friend made um, me a sourdough loaf and that's all I'm thinking about right now, but I need to get this load started and then I will eat. Okay, well we live in an in-law unit and the people um, who we live with, like that's where we do our laundry. Again, they're in their place and it's not bad at all because we know them really well and we love them and it's great. But that just means that I have to wait until she says, she gives me the okay to come over. I'm just gonna start my coffee. Ooh, I probably look a little hurt today. Ooh, our friend Kevin um, made espresso beans and gave us some, not espresso beans, coffee beans. I guess you can use them for espresso if you wanted to. And I'm gonna make a little French press. Put the laundry in. I got my coffee. I got my body blue. <laughs> I did the tan yesterday, I don't know if you can tell. And I washed my hair, so that's why it's like poofy and not cute. So I'm doing pretty well on my schedule. Here, I'll show you what these days say. So on Wednesday I bought my tan, I bought my brother's birthday present, but it hasn't come yet. I was gonna buy it in person and I didn't have it, so I just need to wrap it. Um, I did these two returns yesterday because I was so exhausted on Wednesday, I couldn't do it. Um, bought a baby blanket that I've been wanting to buy. I was supposed to start packing my hospital bag yesterday and I didn't because I feel like so much of it is like gonna be the day before. Even though I should probably just like start the bag, open it, put the things in that like I know for a fact, like I'm not gonna need up until, um, you know, up until the day, so I should do that. And then on today, I have to clean the oven, because our oven is so disgusting, I didn't even realize it until I saw a video on how to clean an oven, and then I looked at ours and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's disgusting. Ooh, I put too many beans. Ooh, too many beans, too many beans. I wanna finish the my baby playlist for while I'm in the hospital. I want to kind of clean up the garage a little bit, at least get a head start, and then organize my nightstand drawer and my junk drawer. The tricky part about today though, I have a couple other things I need to do. I need to go get my blood drawn, and then my parents are moving out of like the our home that we grew up in. They're staying in the area, but they're just moving to a different house. And so I'm gonna go by there and see the house for the last time, which is actually really sad, but um, I wanted to do that before they left. And then I thought I'd try to like take you along to all the stuff with me. Um, Cause it's a busy day. But I just got a bunch of packages from things I've been ordering. Oh, and this is lovely. Literally took my eyes off Louie for like 45 seconds. And he marked one, two, three times. Isn't that lovely? This is not the marking. This is like Dawn soap suds. So I got the Freedom Mom postpartum kit. I heard that is like extremely, extremely helpful. Cause I think the hospital like offers a lot of this stuff, but um, I don't know, people highly recommended getting that. We got her um, a little bath towel and <laughs> it has little ears on it. Got some more breast milk bags. Oh, this isn't a baby thing, but I got, um, these ice cube trays for like the tiny little things. So I've been seeing like TikTok videos of like coffee with the little tiny ice cubes and I'm like, oh. it's like so, so aesthetically pleasing. Freedom Mom disposable underwear. Oh yes. 
these are my thank you cards because I really need to write my thank you cards for my um, baby shower. Oh, these are cute. I got these off Amazon too. And I think there's like four different designs. Yeah, like here's like another one or whatever. And I can link all of this um, below too if for some reason you're wanting these. Okay, and then this part um, is for Mother's Day. Mom, if you are watching, please turn this off or fast forward. My siblings and I, I think, are trying, are gonna try to do something for my mom, but I thought what would be sweet, so our daughter is going to, once I go back to work, she's gonna be um, at my mom's house two days a week, and so I wanted to get my mom like a few like grandma books to read to her when she stays there. So I've, I haven't read any of them, <laughs> but I looked up like books for grandmas and, da and granddaughters or whatever and um, I think like parenting.com or something had like top 10 books or something. Okay, so I have two different kinds of nursing bras. I have one that is the Skims brand and it's the kind that clips like open. Um, and then I also put this one on my registry and my mom got me this one like it flaps open And I've heard that these are really nice for sleeping because you kind of leak a little bit So nice to wear these and then put like a pad in there to soak up the leakage Hopefully it fits. I got this in a medium and then the skims one. Oh my gosh Savon um, Ayla, she's a Instagrammer. She posted about the Skims ones, so I was influenced by the influencer and got those. Um, but she had gotten them in large, extra large, and she's really petite. Um, and so I got them in large, extra large, and it's kind of tight. <laughs> I'm like, geez, Kim. I'm like, this is a large as feels like a small. But anyways, okay, what is this? Oh, this is my breast pump. So I was planning on getting the LV breast pumps. The LVs are the cordless, hands-free ones that just go into your nursing bra. I have a Babylist gift card, so I wanna buy them off of Babylist, but they're sold out there, so I've been waiting for those to come back in stock. You're typically prescribed, I think everyone is, prescribed a um, breast pump. And so you just have to like contact your insurance and see like which ones you're eligible to get. This is the one that I got. My sister got it and so she recommended it. It's the Spectra S1 Plus. So Spectra is the blue one. Um, Spectra has one that's pink and that one plugs into the wall and this one doesn't plug into the wall. Um, so with my insurance, I had to pay $75 extra for this one, um, but that's pretty good. Here's my breast pump. <laughs> not very glamorous. Ah! I do really want to clean the oven. I have to be at the blood place in like two hours. And I actually read that cleaning the oven, it's only going to take like an hour. But no, that, that's too rushed because I have to get ready. I think I'm just going to clean the oven after, later. We're at my, or I'm at my parents' house. That is now no longer their house. Well, yeah. I'm partially doing this too so that I have, um, my video of it, even though my mom sent a video. Everything is so empty. The empty dining area and kitchen and living room. This is weird. Okay, I'm gonna start with my bedroom that I was in. It's very purple. <laughs> and this was my sister's room. I feel like you guys probably don't really care too much, but this is mainly for me. And I'm probably gonna have like, this is my parents' room. Probably gonna have like one walk around or something where I just, just me, without the camera. And this is my brother's room. I've always said that like, like I don't mind change or I like change and stuff. And then, and then like the more like change has started to, um, happen in my life. I've realized I am not much of a change lover. So this is pretty weird. This is the house that we grew up in, or we lived in a house down the street until um, I was five. But then this is the house I've been in from five to moving out, being married. So we've had this house for like a little over 20 years, but they were wanting to move on to something different. So they sold it, it's kind of sad. I didn't think I'd get emotional. Okay, I'm gonna go have my moment. 
well that was sad <laughs> Sorry for the sadness of the video. I have to leave soon, but in the meantime, I'm gonna fold all these baby clothes, and I didn't even get to like all the stuff that was scheduled for today, except for cleaning the oven. The other stuff is pretty quick, so I think I might just do that before bed tonight. And then the oven will just have to be another day. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, enjoyed all the mummy stuff. Talk to you in my birth vlog. Bye.